making an AC compressor bracket. This is <laughs> Ricardo from RPTs. Um, he sent us a template jig so that you can use an R56 AC compressor, but on a K-series. So basically we're just remaking that into a two-piece. Yeah, we're recording. All up in the video. <laughs> Remember to us to talk back. RPT Creation sent us a jig, so we're just making a bracket. Yeah, so um, he sent us basically a, a jig that he made for adapting basically an R56 AC compressor onto a K-series. So we're going to do that so that we can keep all of the factory lines and everything intact instead of having to make custom one-off lines to be able to adapt to the, you know, the the factory stuff that is already there because we're going to keep the condenser everything from the mini in line where it's at and then we're just going to adapt the bracket to fit the R56 compressor onto the K-series so they're able to use that and, and we'll make it a little bit easier for those people out there that are doing the K-swap and you know want to keep AC. We're, we're down here in Florida and if I don't have AC it ain't worth nothing. You need AC. AC. You need AC. Any car in Florida for sale, any used car. Once it, once it got AC. Ice cold AC, bump it up like another two that, grand another just two for that. Grand. Yeah. AC, don't run right, still sold. Yeah, it's got ice cold AC though, doesn't run right, misfires, two grand more. <laughs> Ninety mil. Look at some adjustments. Yeah, so just figuring out basically where we are going to go ahead and place the throttle cable and get everything else in line there. And then we got a few other sensors that we're gonna piece together and get this thing ready so we can start it up. It's fat boy. Oh, the battery. That's what she said. Okay, so we're bolting up the shifter and everything. Everything came out pretty easy, right? The center. Center, a little bit of a pain to get out. It, it's a bunch of the Torx bits to get everything apart in these. Um, so just once you have all the bits and everything that you need, it's just, you know, taking it apart piece by piece just to make sure you know what comes out where and that, you know, you don't miss any tabs or anything like that that are hidden behind. Uh, but everything is out here. And then what we're gonna be doing next basically is making a bracket where we can actually bolt this mount to the center of the fixture here and then bolt the actual shift box to the top of that. And then we're gonna go ahead and run the cables all the way up front from there to the transmission. And uh, once we get done with that, we're gonna go ahead and reassemble the rest of the interior and get it back in maybe, place. Maybe looking, yeah, looking factory again. And aside from obviously a RSX shift box that is gonna be in here. Right. Oh, you're making a, going to hole venting. You know, so what we're going to do basically is we are going to adapt the shift box to be similar to like a no cut style shift box uh, that's going to actually sit underneath in the tunnel area. Okay, okay. And then we're able to run the cables underneath the car because the problem here is if you look inside. So through the center here, you got your evaporator core, everything else. So you're not able to actually run cables here. You'd have to run them along the side here or, the side. or over okay. there um, because of everything's being squished in the center. So what we're gonna do is we're going to use this to actually mount the shift box below. below and then, and then the underneath. cables will go right tucked up underneath here. Okay, cool. Okay, chance of fab way. First piece, first piece down. Ah! It was, it, that's a joke. Don't, don't try it at home. I wish I. <laughs> first piece is already made, guys. Now we're gonna be making this um, this piece right here. The Shoot. bracket for the bracket. Yep. We got AC bracket on. There it is, guys. We gotta tack it. We gotta tack it up. Some more holes. Matting, 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 matting. Kind of brace it here. Once we get this, oh, here, yeah. Oh, 
Oh. And we can use this just 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 a mini stuff so you can use it in everything. No, this is for a mini because this we're gonna use the mini cooper um AC compressor. AC compressor. Okay. Actually Ricardo is the one that suggested doing like this. RPT. This is actually his um mock design. Yeah. Mock design. So, All right, yeah. Mini Cooper is getting more 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 mad scientist fabbing. Yeah, more more customization. Um, so what we're doing now basically is this is a part of the bottom portion of the rail for the front of the core support. And the problem that we're having there is that the AC compressor, where it's going to sit and the belt is going to be, it's, it's literally going to be right in this area. Uh, so what we're doing now is basically I've notched this back as you can see here, and then we're gonna go ahead and frame this out and box it in with steel. So once that's done, then we'll go ahead and bolt it up, and then we should have all the clearance that we need for the AC compressor as well. Okay, let's see. Did a fly on your pizza? Yeah, what's up? Everybody on YouTube today? Huh? A pizza? Sweet. You guys want to be on the channel? Cardboard again. <laughs> Taking it back. So this is going to frame out the back half of it here. Then that way we'll make it into one piece again. It'll make it sturdy. And then we're going to frame this end here. Just box it all completely closed up and just give it a little more strength. And then we'll have the clearance also that we need. Okay, cool. Uh, gosh. Nice. Probably put one or two gussets on there. No, we don't got room for gusset. No, gusset, my. Where are you going? No gusset, because in there. It's stuck in your fist. I can't eat that. I want it so bad. Though. Oh, for real? Yeah. I we add a, if we added a gusset on here, then it would actually hit where the compressor is going to go because the compressor housing itself with right, the pulley is right. going to sit yeah. like all the way up here. All right. Almost. Yeah, about three quarters of the way down with it. So just basically starting from one end, tacking from there, and then just keeping that gap tight and then just moving our way all the way down to the bend so that we can get everything as smooth as possible. Oh. Yep. And then once we go yeah, ahead and bolt got, it up. You got little grooves going right there. Yeah, we got the grooves, everything. Oh, wow. Look like factory. Chancy fab. Y'all don't know. Let me tell you about that chance. I was about to weld up the bracket here for the front of the um, Mini Cooper AC clearance. Audi. As you know, guys, the AC compressor goes right down here, so we definitely have to notch it out. Compressor itself will sit here. You see how the wheels? Yeah, the wheel. Yeah. Yep. It's just gonna be close, call, but it's close. It's yeah, fit. it's gonna be close, but it'll fit. So as you can see, we're getting this side cleaned up here at the bottom. Um, what we did is we notched this portion of the rail all the way back so that we could get the clearance that we need for the belt as well as the AC compressor that's gonna sit basically right in this area. So. Once we got it notched back as far as we did here, the only problem that we have is that this was straight flat, so it wouldn't allow it to go all the way through so that I could put the bolts through. So I went ahead and just cleaned this back an a angle. little bit in an angle because as you can see, it's gonna follow the same angle here. Yeah. So now when we slip this through, yeah. should be able to fit the bolts right in the bottom. 
like that, and then we can go ahead and bolt it up from there. Just like stock. But that just came just like that from the factory, man. Yep. We're gonna go ahead and get it painted up and everything before we do install it completely. And then from there, we're gonna also be working on the bracket for the R56 uh, AC compressor. So that will be next so that we can actually get that centered and in line and figure out what belt we're going to use for it. Um, and then we'll be able to get AC going in this thing as well. Check it out guys. Pedal bracket that Chance of Fab made is back from powder coat. You guys see me made that also. All the pieces. Ready to go back on the top? Intake take manifolds back on. Every team back Air on. Team looks nice. It's it's not coming, out. Together. coming together. You guys see the sensors there. Check this out. Look all stuff now, right? Yep. Might be this it's part of cotton special. You like that? I like that. Alright. Shout out to my boy Push Milk, Sana Manala. Nala. Time for some shift the box love. Yes sir, we're getting that set up now. So um, the issue that we have is just the width of the clearance in the tunnel. So five and three quarter inches is the width of like an OEM, like a RSX shift box or you know any of these aftermarket billet boxes as well. Um, but this is, as you can see, a little bit over that because I measured the width of this out as five and three quarters and put it in the tunnel and it fits. But with this extra width here, it won't sink up high enough to where we're actually able to bolt this in place. So what I'm gonna do is, is I'm gonna notch just the frame of this back basically to the width of the shift box itself so that we're able to get the clearance we need and go ahead and mount it up into the chassis. Stranded in the open. Check it out, it's all cut down now on the sides. Probably created another piece right there to hold it up. So that way the cables can still run underneath the car though, so okay. the cables will go underneath and then it'll give us all the clearance we need and don't have to worry about running cables through the inside somewhere you and put drill more holes. Yeah. What? You're putting nuts on the back of there now? Yeah. But this is threaded right now, but I'm going to put nuts on there after. Okay. Same thing, I did the same thing here. that insane shifter top guys chancy fab we got it in there so uh what i'm doing now is basically just making sure everything clears uh, because obviously as we push the shifter side to side we want to make sure it's not going to make contact with anything so this mechanism here that connects to the cables goes forward and back so we had to notch back a little further here so that it would clear um, this is still going to touch this little bracket so i'm going to end up having to cut this off because this is going to actually slip on to the top of the arm here. So when you push that over, it's gonna hit this little tab. So I'm gonna have to cut that off as well. Um, and then after we get done with that, we're gonna work on piecing the factory shifter bracket over the oh, top yeah. of it, just so we can uh, you know, get it in place and see how it aligns. Weight reduction, every piece. Right. What you want to do? Oh, you look for something that says. Yo, me look at upon no cutting this, my no, own. Come on. Oh. <laughs> how me talk, my own. You don't know, make a fun of my language. <laughs> I don't know. Justin used all the damn cutting blades, just like, guess what else he does? He eats my chicken nuggets. Whenever I put them on the counter, eats them. See my drink right here? He probably drank it. But what he doesn't know, is put a little laxative in there today. So we'll see how this afternoon goes. <laughs> Yo, you know that's Mike's drink. Okay, okay. I always do this to Mike. <laughs> okay. Shifter is looking way better. What you guys think? Nice. Helen lives in, looking all stuck. What you guys think? Nice. With all those throttle cables, 
trying to get the right length. Got one here that's a little bit longer than we need it. So um, basically what we're going to do is we're going to make our own throttle cable for this setup. Uh, just so that we have it the exact length that we need it for this chassis and so that we can keep everything in line with the rest of the wire and harness. Um, so we got our silicone hoses in for the vacuum lines and everything like that. So just plumbing those back the rest of the way as well. Um, and then got the hole drilled in the firewall back underneath here. So it's going to kind of just follow the harness all the way back and then it'll tuck right underneath okay. there and, and straight back to the pedal assembly. Okay, cool. So I'm uh, going to finish that up next and then after that we're going to work on the AC compressor mount. So uh, what we're doing here is we have the header that we're going to be using on the K-Series Mini Cooper. Um, that car eventually is going to be turbocharged. So basically what I'm doing is I'm building a header that we're going to use for now um, in the transition time between so that we can go ahead and get it tuned and everything else like that. So this is actually the top portion of it here was a TSX header. Of course it had the factory flange and everything there. Um, but what we did is basically went ahead and cut all of that off and I'm going to be building these pie cuts out to get it to clear not only um, just the mount for the, the rear portion uh, from the RPT Creations uh, engine mount kit, but it's also going to need that push backwards a little bit to transition out and actually clear the subframe. So we're building it back in and then it's going to come back out and then loop back and underneath the subframe from there. So. Uh, just getting the pie cuts tack welded for now. We're going to go ahead and test fit it in place and we're going to also include a v-band on here um, So that way if you know the exhaust is separated or anything like that It's easier to take it apart and put it in the car as well. How's the, um, the wiring coming with the ECU everything? Wiring was not very fun. Um, we got everything else all sorted out on the car um, Ran into a couple of issues along the way um, One thing was that this car was originally an automatic um, we converted it to a manual as well as K-Series. So um, with doing that, what you have to do is the um, CAS system for the Mini Cooper BMW side of things, um, it actually needs to communicate with a few different sensors and things uh, to read those in order to tell it to allow the ignition to turn on. Um, so this was an automatic, so it had a little bit more um, as far as what it required for that. So we actually had Javi over at Midnight Tuning uh, he came by and saved the day and was able to rewrite the coding to our factory ECU and be able to make it write it as though it's a manual transmission um, and then he disabled a bunch of the additional things that stopped it from starting like the um, there was a sensor for like the you know the brake pedal switch there's another one it's like a sensor that senses that someone's sitting in the um, you know the seat and everything like that as well so we disabled those things so we were able to key it over um, and then once we got to that point um, you know the went to go go ahead and upload a map into the computer uh, the K Pro computer and it would not um, turn on so it was an issue with the you know the the K Pro that she received um, you know prior to bringing the car in so went ahead and diagnosed everything there um, and the computer ended up being the culprit um, as far as the K Pro goes we had a, another computer that we borrowed from Uncle Son's yellow EK hatch there and um, went ahead and plugged that computer in here and that one powers up and everything just fine um, downloaded a, you know, a base map so that we can at least turn the car over, started it up, and we're good to go from there. So now we're sourcing another computer for the time being, um, and then we got Uncle Son's computer in there at the moment. But okay, so pretty soon we can, then, after you're done with the header, we can do a little driver. Uh, yeah, little drive once, like once we get done with the, the header, then I'll have the, the other header that we used in there was um, like off of an element or something, just so it wasn't, you know, open exhaust straight from there at least. Um, but after we get done with this one, we're going to put a O2 bung and everything on there so that uh, we can get Hobby tuned to uh, come down and tune that thing. Okay.
AC compressor time. You know, it's, it's too hot in Florida, so uh, this car is going all the way to Pennsylvania, but uh, you need AC no matter where you're at. Here, we need some AC in the shop right now. Hot, my you. Hot. So uh, we got all the parts back from powder coat and uh, just getting everything buttoned up now, getting it all put on. We got the exhaust manifold cover there. We also got our intake piping in, the bracket for the AC compressor, and then of course our catch can. So all of the rest of the front end stuff is completed here. We're just waiting on the passenger side axle and then once that's done, um, we can go ahead and get this thing on the dyno. Nice. Uh, basically just making a few custom brackets to be able to hold the uh, filler ports for the hot and cold side for the AC lines um, because everything's obviously custom in there there's nowhere for the lines to actually sit and the factory joints where they would sit were little plastic like couplings that would hold it up yeah. um, and it doesn't fit in line because of the k-series swap in there now so i'm just going to make a little custom bracket for both sides to be able to hold them uh, so then that way we can get the ac ports in a direction where they're you know not interfering with anything else and then also not just dangling around in the engine bay Wake up, got cut up. Yeah. Wake up, today's gonna be a good day. Wake up, today's gonna be a good day. Wake up, today's gonna be a good day. Wake up. Look at this, we're gonna mount right there, my own. Like factories, my own. And that's coming out so you can just access it. So you can access it here because there's nowhere else for it to go with the angle and everything. You can't put it here because the front course port that goes on here, the plastic and everything's going to cover that. Oh, really? Plus okay. then you have the support bar that comes out and across. So the closest spot that we can move it to where it's going to be accessible is to just push it back this way and mount it in here. So it's going to be right in front of the manifold, but then that way if you needed to charge the AC, you'll be able to get easy access to it. And then you got the low pressure and then high pressure side over there. That's fine. All right, guys, guess what? Guess what? The front end is on for the final time. You know, Mike had to take it on and off to fix certain things and get it right. Look at this. Nice stock. Check this out. You guys seen this? The bracket. Bracket right here. Made for the AC line. And everything is all neat now. Everything's so custom. And everything's custom. Guys. Look at the fan. Fan shot custom. This cut. Whole swap custom. Everything custom. The the intake got its own stock RAM, custom Chancy Fab cover, TSX header converted to all wheel drive header for the Mini Cooper. Too much, too much, too much custom stuff. Alpha injectors, you got too much sauce. You got too much sauce. Crew run run. Look at this. Bracket, custom brackets made. AC, load the AC up. Everything is just. You guys already seen the back from previous videos how we did this. Everything looks stock. Look at it. Look at it. Got an O2 sensor down there. Oh, it's good to go, man. It's good to go. She got upgraded fuel pump, AM. Everything's looking good. Man, everything looking good, my youth. Yo, you like that? Time for taking to the dyno now. Yeah, we're getting ready for the dyno. Just cleaning up the rest of this stuff out of the interior here so that we can put the rest of the plastics back in. Um, get it ready for the dyno, pretty much. 
Sweet, man. We're right there. And what about that one axle? We'll figure it out yet, or what we're doing on that one? Um, we'll see how it goes. See how it goes. <laughs> we'll see how it goes, and it's gonna go good because this thing's gonna be blasting up. Maria's gonna be pedal to the metal, smashing yeah. it. So everything else up front, everything's good here. Um, had to take the front end back apart because we were missing one of the AC lines. Um, so had to go source one of those, was able to get that and get everything else fit in together. Um, so the AC lines fit. All oh, AC lines fit. Just like factory, we're using the R56 lines along with the R56 AC compressor. Um, we also, basically the, the main things that we had to do was we had to modify the length of the line that's running on the passenger side here. One over there? Yeah, because it was a little too short. Okay. Um, so what we ended up doing is uh, basically just cut right on the other side of this over here. It adapts into a hard line. Um, I cut that in half and then basically we welded about li a little over an inch, like maybe an inch, inch and a half piece on it. of aluminum. Um, into there so that it would extend it far enough back so it would clear and it wasn't pulling tension um, it gets the expansion valve or anything like that so this this side over here is all complete you know just the factory line nothing modified or anything like that I didn't make a bracket here just to kind of hold it up and out of the way um, keep it from vibrating and whatnot so um, basically made that and then just some other little small brackets to be able to hold the the lines where you actually fill it just so you're able to you know ease, have those have, have those done have the ease of them being in the way and not just laying down in the engine bay Sweet. all right guys got to back the front off a little bit mike had to just shave a little bit off the tps because he's trying to get it right on the computer for the base map get this thing running because that's a Mustang TPS sensor, so hopefully after this we can get this thing going again for the dyno. Almost, almost bolted up. Yeah, almost there. So um, just got to find another bolt for this back one that's not a Phillips head because I can't get the screwdriver in there to tighten it Tiny all guy. the way down. Uh, but basically just went ahead and notched the sides of the uh, Mustang TPS on here so that we can adjust it a little bit because it only had a center hole so there really wasn't any room to adjust it down and it was reading too high um, on the minimum level when there's no throttle press so uh, just notched the sides of it so that we can adjust it down a little bit and then cool. uh, go ahead and start it back up. All right, cool. Um, now that this is off again, I just want to show you guys some more of the custom stuff, you know, the custom this it's got powder coated, yeah, custom brackets, custom brackets. The, the AC stuff and, and uh, you know, just seeing how everything was routed um, yeah. with the AC system. Good help everybody. We can show you guys underneath, that's a, the that's a original bracket that Chancey uh, um, shaved and welded and braced up on this side. Yes, yeah, so that thing. is the bottom. Basically, it's, it's like a core support. Uh, railing that goes on the bottom of it the top part is the frame rails there the bottom piece so that's what the that's what this side looked like previously but to get the clearance and everything that we needed i went ahead and cut that out yeah um and then basically just boxed it back in Box to reinforce it, back in. it um and then just see what he's talking about right so so thick this is and on this side you can tell you know it's kind of went from thick to like little thin but it's, it's boxed in it's, it's pretty firm yeah so everything's boxed in reinforced and then we have the uh, AC compressor bracket there um, so that will be something that uh, Ricardo with RPT Creations is going to be uh, okay. having upcoming um, as well as is uh, you know an AC mount kit for mount this chassis for so that'll so be awesome yeah, I see the bracket in the back right there the black bracket right there so right there <laughs> So yeah, stuck everything and he made a bracket so it's accessible right there. Yep, and then the only other thing really that we had to do with this one just to get the lines to fit, the the lines that run through and down the passenger, or the driver's side over here, fit perfect, all the factory lines. Um, the one that runs along the passenger side over here, uh, we actually had to lengthen that line uh, by about an inch and a half. No, um, it's it's hard to see, but basically right down it there right yeah it, it goes from a hard line to soft and then back into a hard line so right over there um i'll give you a, a picture of that so you can clip it into the video just to kind of show them but basically what i did is just cut the line there yeah. um then we added uh, an inch and a half of material 
uh, just to lengthen the just line. So it brought it back further so it wasn't pulling on the expansion valve. And then it also gives you better clearance, you know, if you're running a, you know, a turbo kit or whatever header, so it's it's not getting, you know, heat directly to it. Straight, straight, straight. And of course, we've got our S1 manifold, S1 fuel. Chance of that. Everything's looking stuck. All the brackets, so yeah, so everything yeah, else custom is there. radiator. Yeah, custom shroud, radiator, everything. you know, made the shroud so that it, you know, keeps all the airflow in there, directed it straight to the radiator. Um, and then the interior is pretty much assembled as well. Yeah. You want to check it out in here. We got most of that all back together. So just a few other little touches that we're going to do with the shift box there. You guys already seen the pedal and everything that we made. Shift box is in. Looking real nice down there. So yeah, ECU has been mounted. Everything looking stuck. You know, access it before you guys seen it already, but I'm showing you again. And then went ahead and made a bracket and mounted the air fuel ratio gauge. Air fuel. As well. That thing looks stock. Look at it. Sweet. So we're getting there. Getting there, boy. Just about done, boy. Yep. All right, guys. Today is a day. This is a startup startup we've been waiting for. Gas pedal works. We've got three pedals. Three pedals, everything. Uh, ECU is mounted up. Everything else is good. We have the AC compressor in, the whole belt assembly on with the AC compressor in line. Everything's and everything. good to go. Just, um, just free on. Yeah, basically, we're so we're going to tune it, get it done um, on the dyno and everything like that. Then afterwards, we're going to go through and, and uh, add the Freon and everything. We just want to get it up and driving yep, yep. Uh, so we can drive it around and just see how the motor is because this was a used motor that she had um, purchased and, and you know had drop shipped to us with the car. Yep. So we just want to make sure everything's good with it, it checks out, and then uh, we'll finish up the Freon, get the alignment, all that stuff done, and we're good to go. The battery hasn't been running in a while. That's Giving that barrier extra juice. Try to start this thing up. After this, just free on, and then we're going to get the diamond to it. We go. Thing is, she gonna drive that on the street? That thing is loud, boy. <laughs> oh my, oh my God. Can barely hear, is that what you said? See, that thing is loud. Maria, loud. <laughs> it must be a lot quieter, This is a really angry Mini Cooper. That, that exhaust, angry. <laughs> oh my God, there you have it, folks. Like, subscribe. It's military grade, but this is not a drill. It's American made, but we all will drive the world. I see them changing the game. That's one always will. Got them cars killing speeds and just sound like artillery. It's all will and deep, almost like a war machine. Like it's man for the infantry, Air Force, Navy, Army, and Marines. Now they clock triple digit speeds and they got them on the bases. Must be all the innovation. Watch them racing information. Got the gauges twitching crazy, switching up the pace, shifting in the Civic or in S2K. This is not your daily S1, always gripping pavement. S1, S1, you gon' want a test run. All wheel drive in the lane in the left one. S1, S1, you gon' want a test run. All wheel drive in the lane in the left one. S1, all wheel drive, got the mind that's killing time. All wheel gripping, full of four wheel gripping, gripping. S1, all wheel drive, got the mind that's killing time. All wheel gripping, we'll have you gripping, don't get caught. Even on the straights, yeah, warming up that ASEX. The Florida got the 
street cred We rollin' down the street quick Got that MSD switch B-series or a ZC And that LSV to hella clean yeah. Tell them where to meet at Yeah, we go to Mexico Racing for the pink slips And ain't no 12 to catch a soul Can't swap the world till we spin the globe K20, MR2, NSX, CRX with the K24 Reppin' that EF Go back to the days of the HF DX and the EX Before them green underglows If you ain't see it, you must be running slow Say you ain't something we can't afford But we got that cam to cord That's this one All-wheel drive Got them grinders coming All-wheel clipping Four-wheel clipping This one All-wheel drive Got them grinders coming Four-wheel clipping Four-wheel clipping This one All-wheel drive Got them grinders coming All-wheel Then wheels are never slipping. S1 all wheel drive, got the